How long do we sit with these images after we've done the shoot and post-production, color grading and editing and retouching these photos? It's some tedious shit, so cut your rates, fuck that. Know your value, then add tax. What's good, YouTube? Welcome to my channel. I'm Tay Price, and I'm here to educate, inform, and inspire creatives that are trying to get their business and brand off the ground. So in today's video, I wanna talk about five mistakes that photographers make that could potentially be holding you back. Look, I'm not gonna over talk it, so let's just get straight into it. So number one is don't be confrontational with your clients or with potential clients. We all get that one client that pisses us off, they're impatient, they're demanding, they want a lot for a little. And this is majority clients. This is this is this type of stuff that you're gonna have to endure being behind the camera. But we get this one client and the situation unfolds however it does. And then from that point forward, you decide I'm never gonna deal with a client like that again. So you have this chip on your shoulder and that's not an effective way to run your business. The reality is that we're gonna get this type of client again and again and again. Majority clients, if they're not familiar with a camera, then they don't understand the entire process that goes into it. So not only the work that goes into it at the front during the shoot, but after the shoot. Most clients think that as soon as the shoot is done, that their content is ready for them to have and they're ready to post. That's not how it works. So it's up to us to be patient and to take the high road in this situation. Unless you wanna be the asshole photographer and potentially burn out your reputation, which wouldn't be that great for you because at the end of the day, Reputation is key in this business. Number two is you don't know it all. There's always something that you can learn. You can be great at what you do, but there's always gonna be some room for improvement. There's always a way for us to get better. That's As photographers, that's what we're supposed to look for is, is, is room for improvement, right? I don't care if you're one of the guys that shot manual mode for the past 13 years, or you're natural light only, this, this, and that, and the third doesn't matter there's always room for improvement i like to keep the mentality always a student just because i can always find something to learn new even if it's just jumping into a whole different genre um, and get better in a different field of photography then i'll do that put your nose in a book or go down a rabbit hole on the internet do some research and guarantee that you'll be able to learn something new so don't be under the assumption that you know all this doesn't exist there's always a way to build, improve, and grow your craft. Number three is don't chase the newest gear. I learned this one the hard way. Don't be like me. A quick way to tank your bank is trying to buy the newest, trendiest shit that they put out. This shit is expensive, and they drop this stuff every year, and they make minor tweaks to it. I don't really think it's necessary. Of course, quality is always a factor. You always want to have the best quality possible, but you got to learn where to draw the line. And more importantly, you want to worry about your storytelling capabilities more than anything. How can you convey a story with your images? Because just because you jam more pixels into your image isn't going to make you a better photographer. That's not going to level up your game. That's not going to make you stand out from anything. The point here is to be unique and you just having a sharp image will never outdo the art of the craft. So just focus on having a high quality image will not take you as far as you having a unique image or being able to convey some type of story or emotion through your art. So focus on the storytelling aspect. Focus on driving emotion with your images. Don't be so caught up in trying to have the newest camera, the newest lens, or just newest equipment, period. Number four is under no circumstances should you ever undervalue yourself. And I see this one happen way too frequently. I see people giving out home discounts. Um, I see people cutting their rates for clients because they think that the client might not book them. They think, oh, I'm just a beginner and I can't charge that much. Look, no matter what level you're at, you have to have confidence within your craft. You have to know your value because if you don't, somebody will undervalue you. A thing that I've always tried to keep in mind is that if a client approaches me, then I'm the expert in this situation. 
you have the leverage if the client comes to you. They're asking you for your work, your art, your style. So don't sell yourself short. Have confidence in what you're capable of doing and stand behind that. Set your rates and hold that. A lot, a lot of people will just try to be cheap for the sake of being cheap because they don't realize what all goes into it. How many hours have you put into your craft for you to even be noticed? How many hours have you put in to develop your style? How long do we sit with these images after we've done the shoot and post-production, color grading and editing and retouching these photos? It's some tedious shit, so cut your rates, fuck that. Know your value, then add tax. Number five is not reinvesting into your business. Scale your business 101 is reinvesting. You make a little bit of profit, and of course you wanna put some in your pocket. We all wanna do that. But more importantly, you should be taking the majority of the money that you make after you cover expenses and figuring out a way to pour it back into your business to grow your business. You want your business to flourish, right? Or do you just wanna pad your pockets? In order for you to be successful, these are the moves that you have to make. So you can either invest into equipment, and that's not to contradict what I said earlier about gear chasing, but sometimes it's necessary for you to upgrade your equipment. It may not necessarily be your camera body, it could be your lens, or it could be lighting maybe it's a new computer to speed up your workflow or maybe you're investing into a marketing plan that's going to potentially bring you new clients and the point isn't just to be throwing away money just to be spending it you want to be strategic with this everything that i'm using in this setup right now was a plan that i created in 2020 for 2021 I bought a new camera, a new monitor, new mic, new lens, new tripods, light stands. I remodeled this entire section in my house specifically to do this right here. At the end of the day, in order for you to scale your business, for you to grow to a higher level, you are going to need to reinvest. So these are five mistakes that I see photographers make. I'm guilty of all five charges myself. I'm not exempt from any of these, but basically I'm putting this information out there just to help anybody out from the jump so they don't run into these things. Or if you're in the middle of them, maybe it'll bring some awareness. And look, at the end of the day, the point is just to be better than we were yesterday, right? We just want to find room for improvements and wherever we can do that, we're going to do that. So. That being said, that is the end of this video. I wanna know some of your guys' 2022 goals that you have for your business. I don't care if you're just starting or if you're already in the business, you already got some things going, what are your goals that you have for 2022? If you could smash that like button, that'd be much appreciated so we can help get this channel off the ground. I'm getting this fired up this year. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and the notifications so you know the next time that I drop. And until the next time, I will see you guys.